Ugh, hot like hell out here. Anyways, we've screwed around long enough. I think it's time to start building a floor in this beast. I'm gonna see what I can get accomplished today as we are. Well, tomorrow I gotta run over and pick up my uh, my Lambrettas that I bought and that type of good stuff. And then we're going to, uh, on Monday, hustle out to Jamaica. So this will be a short video, but sweet as they say. It's only hot as a dickens outside, so, you know, I'll see what I can get done in a couple days. I'll be in Jamaica, laying on a beach. So, let's get working. Alrighty, finally the long-awaited floor. So, I'm going to do the back first. I'm going to basically build a grid out of uh, one inch by one inch and one inch by two inch tubing. I should cover all this area up to about where the, uh, the wheel tub there ends, or the back door. So it's kind of got to go, because I want to retain this item here, the, the sill plate. And it's going to have to come up and then right there. So I'm going to have obviously the floor raised here, but... Uh, Hopefully not too much. I mean, it is what it is. They'll still have plenty of clearance in case we have a, a traveler that needs a ride. All right, let's get to work. All right, so where it's gonna angle up, somewhere in that department. And we are about 55 inches here, so. All right, let's go cut some metal. So I'll just pretend to open this box here because I don't have a box cutter. So the people at uh, Hexon sent me a uh, box of Rolox, which I, of course, appreciate because uh, I'm a person who uh, likes free stuff. Not because I can't afford it, but because I'm cheap. These are a hex cut uh, Rolox pad. Which, you know, I've always wondered why they've always cut them in circles to begin with because it's such a waste of material. But these things, you know, they fit together when you cut them and it really makes a, a world of difference in terms of uh, using your material wisely when you're manufacturing. But I've also got to commend them on the noticing that uh, I'm a horrible welder and I have to grind everything because, <laughs> I mean, that's just the fact, right? So I think we're going to pull these out, give them a little try and see what they can do. But uh, Hexon, you can get them on Amazon, so hopefully they uh, don't suck. But uh, Hexon, you can get them on Amazon, so hopefully they uh, don't suck. Backing pad, but I like these because, I mean, let's face it. The plants run out of resources and we're certainly not helping it any. But, you know, I bet these actually work better because of the, uh, the edges there. And remember kids, safety first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I often wonder, had, uh, had OSHA been around at the time they were building the Hoover Dam, could they have actually built it? I mean, you look at some of the videos of them constructing that stuff. Uh, absolute safety, just nightmare. You know, it's hard to believe that we've come this far, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You'd, you'd be surprised what I can and cannot do at work for just the simplest things with the safety rules, which, hey, nobody likes being dead, but still, sometimes you have to get shit done. Let's try to do a super slow-mo action shot. Well, 
Well, I can't seem to get it to do in super slow motion. Not because my camera won't do it, but because of my utter lack of, uh, you know, skills and when it comes to using my own equipment. <laughs> yes, uh, me likey likey. These are uh, nice and they actually work a lot faster than the round ones, believe it or not. So when you're grinding off dog turds, which are usually what my welds look like, these definitely help. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, Hexon. You get them on Amazon. Tell them I sent you. Alrighty. Glad I got my canopy up. Keeps the sun from burning my brain. Alrighty, so that is the beginning of a floor structure. A little higher than I uh, wished it was, but uh, can't compromise for the, uh, the air ride because, you know, you gotta be cool, right? Alrighty. It's all taken. Weld this to the side panels there. And then this will come straight down. I'll make a panel to cover all that up. One, two, three panels for the top, one for the back. And that portion will be good. And that's a, that's 11 gauge one by one. Now that shouldn't be a problem holding a uh, passenger if needed. And with that, I think I'm done for the day. I'm gonna go lay in the pool and uh, have a beverage. Cause I'm hot. Alrighty, let's get to work. The rain came in last night and killed my uh, sunflowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, paint all this stuff out with the uh, rust encapsulator and get this stuff sealed up real quick and then I can start building building the floor here. I think I've decided to go back with plywood on the top deck here um, simply because it'll be able to hold more more weight and such uh, as needed. So I don't know, we'll play with that, but uh, I'm gonna build a little metal panel here and we'll, we'll stand here jaw jacking. I'll go ahead and grind this off the spots where I'm gonna, well, actually, I guess I'm not going to weld this here. This will actually be screwed down from the plywood, so.
Yeah, I know. Paint with the brush is not ideal, but uh, it's too darn hot out here to be able to spray it. Plus, uh, you know, this makes for a nice texture. I'm probably better off with like a like a stucco hopper than this thing, but it is what it is. At least I get to wear my new hat. Since I got the uh, rust encapsulator here, I think I'll hit these window frames. Well, I got a where well, I got a good chance of putting the windows in here uh, probably by the end of the week with any luck. Guess I should uh, stop for a second and pull the rest of the upholstery off first. But, you know, yeah. All righty. So now we got that done. So now I have to figure this out with the plywood. So, honestly, this thing is a stupid tape measure. All right, we are 55 by 52. Well, you have to remind me, 52. So clearly a sheet of plywood is not gonna work, so. I'm gonna take two sheets of half inch plywood, uh, cut them down, it's one that's 48 inches by 55, and then a seven inch strip on the side, and then a second one for the top, laminate them all together, and then that will give me a piece that's, uh, you know, the five feet wide and, you know, so on, but one inch thick, and that'll replace what was there originally. I can't get a five foot wide piece of plywood, at least it doesn't exist in my area, so you gotta make your own. I do like this hat though. Look. It's got toitles on it. Well, this was a stupid idea. Uh, I don't like this at all, so this is a pull this out and go throw this back in the burn pile, and we'll uh, do it in metal. Or we'll work on a different plan. It seemed like a seemed like a good one at the time. Ugh, what a dumb idea. I'm gonna take a quick trip over and pick up my uh, lambrettas I bought uh, a couple weeks ago and try to relive my uh, youth. Well, probably not. Well, something happened. As they say, we're in the weeds. Uh, 
Uh, not sure what happened, but we apparently blew a wheel or something. Now we're f***ed. Damn it. Maybe break an A-arm? Wheels full of gravel. Tire didn't pop. How the hell we get out the ditch? Uh, we are currently in the middle of God's country, I guess. The children of the corn. Depends which God you like, I guess. Well, that there is a ball joint nut. That is not good. Old cars are fun. Everybody should have one. Waiting for the tow truck, only an hour. It's roughly 95 degrees, nothing to worry about. Easy day. Oh, this is Joey, by the way. <laughs> only been an hour, another hour to go. Waiting for the tow truck still. Good times. Water okay, we got a tow truck coming, it's like, okay, cool. Well, I'll be back, I'm gonna grab you guys some water. He went home, he, he picked up his... his uh, uh, so when you own an old car, there's two things you should do. One, you always bring tools, and two, you always bring water, because uh, you break down the side of the road and you just dive dehydration before the tow truck shows up. Pro tip. Cavalry has arrived. Gym membership when you got a little car. That'll work for now. Get us out of the driveway. We're going to hop in the uh, mighty Ford next truck and try this again. Hopefully better results. Ugh. Don't lose your nuts, kids.
it almost seems strange to drive in a car that doesn't break down, you know, at least every time you use it. Anyways, we're here. Well, we made it. So we made it back home. Pretty much uneventful because we were driving the uh, Magic Ford. But this is the one I was after, the 1957 LD150. Uh, this thing has had the same owner since uh, at least the uh, 1980s, she was saying. Last time on the road since 1991. So nearly 36 years. So I'm going to see if it can run. It's pretty much in unmolested shape. Roughly 8,300 miles. It's got the cool little crash guard in the front. Used to have some other mirrors, looked like a windscreen. For the most part, pretty much unmolested. It looks like somebody spray painted at one point. It used to be the, uh, I don't know, some sort of a lime green. But uh, not in bad shape for being uh, in storage for so long. It's been sitting in that uh, warehouse for at least 25 years. And uh, these things were just a bonus here. Got thrown in for uh, good measure. The copper one seems to be in good solid condition. And the rest of these will be parts bikes and that one there is uh, going to be nothing more than yard art because it is absolutely toast but it does have a 1959 texas plate on it so what hides underneath oh that's fucking heavy hang on i'm struggling but yeah, that's what's underneath there. The battery and the fuse block way over there. In order to check the fuse, you gotta take the seat out. So if ever for some strange reason you're rewiring your car and you think, hey, you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery in the fuse block under my seat to save space. Don't do that. That's not good. Unless you like fire, then it's gonna be okay. I had to take the seatbelts out too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What lies underneath? Oh, shield your eyes. It's worse as you go. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, that looks just like fire. After the wheel fell off, uh, I noticed that the brake lights didn't work, so I figured I'd sneak in there and check that out, but then I also noticed that my air compression won't come back on, so I need to dig in the electrical somewhat and see what's going on here, so this is the first thing I come across, so. It's good times. That looks sketchy. I like the zip tie. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect that now. So we slow the fire down. So the question is, how can I fix this? I mean, we've got power windows over here going out the door through a piece of hose, which, you know, it is creative. Then you have the fuse block there, which will look fantastic right there because you could get to it. So, how hard will it be to move that over there? Oh, and then we have all the electrical running on top of the transmission still I have to correct. So, you know, a few scary things. So I think the first thing will be to uh, disconnect the power windows because that's a disaster waiting to happen. Plus, I hate power windows. Um, luckily, I have all the internals for the windows, so I'll put all that back in there and go the old school. Yeah, this, this here's loose, which is never good. Wire is barely in there. That's um, that's going to be a fire hazard. Yeah, extension cord. It's going to be fine. If I knew some Italian songs, I would sing them about spaghetti right now. 
be perfectly fitting. So I would get rid of all that. Get rid of all them spaghettis. Gotta find the tiniest screwdriver ever to undo that. And then power windows situation will be addressed at a different time. This is actually kind of a half genius idea, but typically you wanna have a little contact, little button jobbies that go there. I don't know the hell they're called, but that way when the doors close, they work and the door open, they open up and it's nice and super clean. This, uh, this ain't gonna work. And not that I particularly rail on anybody else's work with this electrical or whatever. Um, you know, but there's certain things that were safety and uh, fire is definitely a big problem. So uh, the electrical is the, the spot where you, you tend to be a little more anal than you need to be. And yes, we're all guilty of doing sloppy work. Trust me, I've done plenty of my own. Oh, I should move my hand so you can actually see, you dumbass. Eh, fuck it, it'll ride. Found it, the lone fuse. That was the key to everything. No uh, no air compressor, no power windows. Probably blew out because of the electrical in the door for the power window. So that's all gone skis. Fix this, get back on the road. And I think I'm gonna relocate that while I'm in here. I mean, I need to tighten up the electrical and the whole thing. I would say it actually was a pretty nice wiring kit. It was just sort of, you know, haphazardly thrown in here, not a big deal. So I'll just do a little clean up and I think we're good to go. Not really what I want to do today, but it is what it is. Oh, it's still the ball joint thing I had to look at. And yeah, all of this is loose. These are all the grounds. Hmm, I don't know. Things don't seem to work right. I don't I don't know why. I'm sure it just vibrated loose. But still, it is kind of funny nonetheless. Yeah, and the reality is uh, there's a few things with this truck, and I, probably most of it really is just uh, vibrating loose. Uh, so Loctite is your friend, but every once in a while you have to kind of go through and snug things up just a touch. Keeps you off the flatbed. So this here is a 175 amp fuse. But let's tie to this little wire. This wire would melt and be on fire long before this fuse would blow. This, this, is, not, this is not usable. I mean, good idea. This wire uh, and that fuse are in a combination. If this was maybe like a 50 amp, that might be more realistic, but a 175, uh, that's a hell of a lot of current. Here, which I have no idea what it does. It does go to an extension cord, so it's probably important. All right. And three hours later, we are making some improvements. Got the fuse block mounted up there. Now it's just a matter of uh, cutting the 5,000 zip ties and sorting all of this nonsense out. So I don't think I'm in a position yet. You have to start cutting splice on the wires, which I need to, but uh, clean up as we go. It's a, it's a process. I still have to put the air conditioning in here, so I'm not gonna get too excited at the moment here, but I definitely gotta clean it up just for safety's sake anyhow. Well, I think that's as good as it's gonna get for now. We're gonna load up first thing in the morning and head out to uh, Jamaica to a uh, little vacay. We heard there might be a little tropical storm thing spinning around, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Wish us luck. Brief intermission while we uh, enjoy Jamaica, at least before the hurricane. That's a hurricane coming.
Yeah, we're uh, trapped in the room because there's a hurricane. This is like the lamest hurricane ever. Should have brought my surfboard. Could be out there surfing. Well, we survived uh, Jamaica. We were supposed to do a lot of uh, fun things, but instead we had a hurricane. So there was no sailing, no, uh, no Johnny Cash estate, no uh, Rose Hills estate, even though we wanted to do it at midnight, whatever. But uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a bad experience after all. So we uh, are heading way back now. What's your reaction to this door knocker, my friend, that Bob sent? Um, I'm just gonna say, Papa Bob, this is the fucking coolest thing I have ever seen. Um, I don't know why you decided to give this to us and not keep it for yourself, but I absolutely love it. And it will have a place in my heart and in my house forever.